Hello, this is Crypto CJ. It's the trade of the day, Friday afternoon Zoom edition. And we were having a nice chat before we got started, and I wanted to capture that on the recording. So Peter asked a good question about trading view and, and its charts and various paid options. Um, Craig, I thought you gave him some pretty good advice about the plans. Can you uh, repeat that for the for those listening at home? Yes, my, my recommendation is to is that everyone basically start with a free plan. And, and then you get the opportunity to upgrade for one month to try it. So you start with the free, get 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 an understanding of it, get familiar with it, and then upgrade to um, Pro or Pro Plus, whichever you think you might need. And any time during that 12 months, you can change that trial at no cost. And then towards the end of that trial, they will offer you usually a very good price to go on to buy it for a 12 month period. So um, it's usually the best discount you'll get that they ever offer. There's also and a just, very good discount uh, on Black Friday. So yeah, I was just going on Thanksgiving to that, in the yeah. US. Yeah, go ahead. So Black, Black Friday is coming up. So yeah. the, you pretty much get the same discount at, on Black Friday. So those of you that need to renew your account sometime, Black Friday is the day to do it. Mm -hmm. And I do that every year. So, Greg, you said you get the same discount on Black Friday as the one that they offer you after the free trial. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's not. I waited. It's not better. The one they offer you is is as good. Okay. Great. All right. Thanks for that. That was important information. Wanted to get everybody on board for that. So, let's talk about Bitcoin. Um, it has held up despite all the economic bad news. It's actually done better in the month of September or September than uh, the S&P 500. Let's, uh, let's go to the chart. <coughs> okay, you should be seeing my Bitcoin month chart. Yep. Okay. And I'll find that article real quick. Yeah, Wall Street has biggest September drop since 2002, so the last 20 years. And I'm not going to go through the article, but it essentially says you know, the S&P 500 is down 8%, where you know we're only down on Bitcoin a little over like three, three and a half percent. So it's actually been Bitcoin's been more resilient than the S&P 500. So you know me, I'm desperate to find a decoupling, decoupling evidence from from Bitcoin, from the, the stock market. Uh, obviously, these are all at-risk assets, so you know the public and investors view them that way, but we're really hoping in the near future that Bitcoin is shown to be more stable than this uh, funny money the governments are throwing around the world right now. So, so I wanted to point that out. Um, on the day chart, which I usually focus upon, we are still within the range that uh, we've been trading in since June, though obviously towards the bottom of it. Um, we're probably going to have a red candle today. We're down a little bit, uh, about 1.6%. We did break over 20K today for a while, not very long, and then dropped again. So yeah, we were over uh, over here earlier this morning, had a really nice run up, pretty much in all at-risk assets. I had one nice trade on, um, on a different instrument uh, during this time. So, and then a big drop, actually caught a Solana short around here and I've been riding that down. So up and down, looks like we're probably gonna, probably gonna give back everything we gained. So from 6.30, we were up almost 5%. And now we're about break even on that. So it's disappointing, couldn't hold that. Curious to see what the weekend holds for us. As you know, I usually like to have a short going on on Friday or Saturday. So I'll probably uh, probably initiate that tonight. Uh, on Ethereum, We are a little bit below halfway between the, the bottom and the top of this range. This has been holding again since June. 
from about a thousand to uh, 19, <laughs> 1980. And we are, uh, you know, 1300 and change right now. And uh, we bounced off this thousand dollar range a couple times. We haven't been there since July. I was hopeful that this was going to be the bottom around 1400, but we broke through that in, in September. Uh, buy the rumor, sell the news on the Ethereum merge, I believe. But we are trending up slightly here, getting getting higher lows, but lower highs. So I think we're going to have a, a decision right about here. Um, let's, uh, let's draw this in. Here and here. I'm not big on structures generally, but this is one I, I believe in and that... Um, you know, when this comes to a head, probably in October, I think we're going to get a break up. We may have a, one dip below be before then, but October generally is a good month for crypto, and we'll see how how it plays out. I mean, the news—I guess it could get worse, but you know, not, not much. I mean, if if England is printing printing money, something uh, something must be going wrong. So, anyway, that's uh, my take on. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the markets overall. Any questions or comments or concerns you want to discuss uh, before we go into altcoin alert? Okay, so how do we trade this? Let's see what we can find. Day trading this late in the week can be uh, a bit risky. Um, I, I generally don't initiate many trades on a Friday night, if any. I usually like to wait till Saturday morning. But um, this is the time for our Zoom, so let's see what we can find, at least put some alerts on and get some some good entries. So I have um, the altcoin alert. I've got the altcoin radar setting. Easy mode is off. I'm sorting by AA score. Let's refresh. And sort. Quant is our, our number one coin, looking really good, up 4.5%. Bullish across here, 82.2, very bullish score. We like that. And this is a project I've traded before and done well with. So I have this one up. Uh, it's not available as a leverage token, but uh, you can trade the spot on Coinbase and in a few others. So when I trade it, it's usually on Coinbase. We had a nice run up earlier in the day, but uh, we had the dip that I showed you a little while ago in Bitcoin. It's not bubbling though. It's dipping without a bubble. And we don't have, oh, actually this is pretty good. Almost 6% between the Bollinger Bands. I was confusing it with something else. So this is interesting. We could get a dip sequence here to trade uh, tonight or tomorrow. Uh, uh, it's not there yet. So you may want to put in, put in your alerts. I'm seeing some support right around here 135 a couple touches well one touch here and almost here a couple dips below but it hung hung in there in this support area here around 135.3.4 so that would be a good place to put an alert i'm not suggesting you just buy it if it goes there but uh you know if your alert triggers you know, reevaluate i mean if it's plunging you know, you don't want to buy it just because uh, CJ talked about an alert there. So, um, so that's one option. As you know, I prefer alerts on indicators. So on the 15 minute chart. So let's go over there. Actually, I don't think we looked at the one hour yet, did we? No, we didn't. Yeah, this is trending up really nicely um, in the last week. Yeah, it's up 36%. About 30% in the last week. A little dip today, though. So on our on our 15-minute chart, let's uh, look at divergence. You might recall divergence is a disagreement between the candle action and the indicators. In this situation, the candle action is down, but the indicator's up. And that would have been a good entry had you been up at 1.30 a.m. yesterday, Pacific time. Yeah, 9% move. 
This one here, 2.30 in the afternoon yesterday was really good too. Yeah, big move there. So this one here from the 28th, not so much. Just a slight drop before it took off though. So yeah. So all the divergence uh, options were, all the bullish divergence were, were good options. So uh, the bearish one's not so good until this last one here. But again, I don't think we can short this anyway. So we're looking for bullish divergence on quant. And set an alert, just right click on this indicator. I use the divergence for many indicators version four. I'll show you that in a moment. Once per bar close on your options, um, I want positive divergence. And this is gonna be an AA score. And then you're good to go. And if you don't have this on your chart and you want to add it, it's real easy. Type in divergence on your indicators on trading view. And this is the one I like. Version four. There is a version three. Don't use that. Um, and it, and as, as you can see, it's alert friendly, but the downside is it does repaint. So it can show this. You know, this this may have first appeared right about here. And then as the the structure kept forming, it it dropped to here. So back testing on this is a little sketchy. But I think it's worth it for the uh for the ease of the alerts. Um okay, so that's one option. Uh, another is to catch the oversold area and then a recovery. So essentially the initiation of what could be a new trend. Uh, a dip and a trend is, is my favorite way to trade and it should be yours too. But uh, like here's an example on the money flow index. We had a drop down here below the 20 value, which is considered oversold. And then it comes back up. So your entry is probably right about here. It does dip first and then shoots up here for a uh, you know, 7% gain in five hours. That's a great day trade. A similar action here. It dropped below the 20, came back up. So your entry would have been probably right about here. And you know you ride this up, you know, five six percent, depending on what your what your goal is. Um, I'm I'm usually looking for prior resistance as a guide and when to get out. So I probably would have set my exit right about here at 4.7. You can also just set in another alert, like a price alert there. And um, and then reevaluate, see if you want to put a stop loss and profit, uh, protect, you know, make your your trade risk free, and then let it run for a while. So, uh, so that's one way you can do the same thing on the RSI. But the RSI didn't have any drops below the oversold area of thirty. So I think the MFI is the better option on on your indicator. Uh, and, and then the final one I like to use is the, the chandelier exit. This is designed actually as a place to help you when to get out of a trade, but I like to use it to get into a trade. So let's see if I made any adjustments to this. Yeah, I've changed this to an ATR period of three and the multiplier 2.5. I think the defaults are, are different. Yeah, the defaults are quite a bit different. So um, you may want to play around with these and test and see which one you like the best. I think making them shorter gives them much better, much better results, uh, much better entries. And um, the buy signals have done pretty well on the chandelier exit. This is one from early in the morning yesterday. 7%. This one here did really well too. It's actually giving us, it's this kind of a coincidence, but the buy signals are coming towards the bottom of the uh, of the MFI range. Actually, this one's at the top, but it kept going, you know, two and a half percent. So you might want to do an alert on the chandelier exit. You can find that one that indicator same here. 
chandelier exit by ever get a lot of people have downloaded it as you can see and in, you know the alerts easy you can go add an alert on ce you can go to buy alert a sell alert or direction change i use a direction change a lot if i'm trading both directions on leverage so um but quant is only available as a spot trade so you know click on your your buy and you're you're good to go i'm going to stick with my um my divergence alert for now so any questions on quant or the different indicator alerts we discussed okay another one altcoin alert was crow crypto.com token bullish at 77.7 also bullish on the Elder Impulse hourly and the long-term sentiment. Uh, we'll talk about these in a little more detail later. It is down two and a quarter percent today. Um, so let's uh, let's check this one out on the hour chart. We had a pump on the 21st to the 23rd to 24 percent. It's given back some of that. But still up nearly eight percent since uh, since the twenty first. So it could recover. You know, whenever I do this, I want to see is there room for it to go back? Is there room to retrace? And we got you know good retracement op potential with this one. Uh, we are in. This is the one I was thinking of when I was looking at quant. Yeah, we've got a. It looks like almost a bubble here on the Bollinger Bands, but the but it's only two and a half percent between the two, so that's not great. It's just kind of dropping along the bottom of the Bollinger Band, and then this one's just kind of hooking down too. It usually is indicative of not much volume. Yeah, you see how, how low the volume is here, and that happens on on Friday afternoon, so it doesn't surprise me. But there could still could be a trade here uh, regarding short-term support. Um, we're already we've already broken it. This is where I would have set my alert. I've been looking at this a couple hours ago. Uh, so that's broken. Um, so I think I go with an uh, I go with an indicator alert on the 15 minute chart. Or you could put a you know what looks good here. It's right around ten dollars or ten cents. So you've got support here. 10.8 cents again here 10.8 cents so that's that would be a good place for a price alert You're right about there 10.8 cents and then we're pretty close already though it's 10.885 so maybe you drag this down to 10 even or 10.5 or something like that uh, let's see yeah that's what i was looking at earlier the hour showing support right around 10 cents i like round numbers so but that's about a 10 percent drop eight percent so if i were trading that and wanted a price alert i think that's what i would go with all right uh on our 15 minute indicators Look at divergence. And yeah, none of these have done very well. These divergence, bullish divergence have hit, and it's only gone up a little bit. This one, a little over 1%. This one's not bad. You know, 2.4, that's pretty good. Probably about the same here. Yeah, not well, a little over 2%. And then these these two are not we don't know about this one it's forming right now it hasn't closed yet so i'm not loving divergence on these um the mfi alert about the same that one was pretty good i think the mfi alerts were actually more useful yeah, it's 2.46% in two hours. That's pretty good there. So 
If I were going to trade this, I'd go with an alert here on the MFI. Add alert crossing up 20. And a score. That's how I do that. I think we can do a little bit better than this setup, though. So I'm, I'm going to pass on this one. But well, let me look at Chandelier Exit. I haven't looked at that one yet. So the buys on the Chandelier Exit have been a little better, but not a lot. This one was good. Almost 2%. These entries were just a little too late. So I don't like those either that much. I think I'd pass on that. Yeah, the, the MFI looked look the best as far as the options available to us. Any questions on CRO? Okay, let's see what else we can do. Uh, another way I like to sort is either elder impulse or long-term sentiment. Um, sentiment is the word on the street. What are people talking about on Twitter? Uh, and the tie, which is the database company aligned with Altcoin Alert, is able to quantify that and send us a, an indication, you know, neutral, bullish, very bullish, you know, bearish, that kind of thing. And the long term, it, it describes it right here. If you want to hover over it, it's uh, comparing the last 24 hours to the last 20 days. That's the one I use the most. Um, and then we also have the Elder Impulse Daily, which is a technical indicator. And just, you can see the description here. It's describing uh, technical values between the 20-day and the 50-day. Uh, you can also go shorter on these. Elder Impulse Hourly, chain, that's a 20-hour to 50-hour comparison. Short-term sentiment compares um, last hour to last 24 hours. But I find long-term sentiment and elder impulse daily are pretty good for uh, further investigation. It's telling me I've got 50 very bullish on the long-term sentiment, got 19 on the elder impulse. Whichever one of these is the fewest is the one I sort by. So I've got XRP here, bullish on long-term sentiment at an elder impulse. AA score is pretty good too. It's down three and a half percent today. So. Um, and we got Link as well. I'd probably choose Link over XRP. I'd rather choose a coin that's not in litigation. So let's check out. We'll look at both. Look at X. We'll look at Link first. Okay, on the hour. Let's get rid of these. Pretty good move. From the 21st uh, to the 28th in one week, almost 30%. Gave back about half. On the five, we're in kind of a, just kind of a, a, a squeezy drop there. No real, not a real dip sequence, no bubble. And, you know, less than 2% between the Bollinger Bands. We don't like that. Usually want to see 3% or more. That's, uh, again, the low volume on uh, on a Friday afternoon. So, again, we've broken through where I would have looked at support, or we're real close to it, right about here at 751. We're at 755 now. So I'd be looking to get in probably around 750. If it drops down there, I'd reevaluate. Re so that would be my price alert suggestion on the indicators. Go to the 15 minute chart. Uh, divergence hasn't done well at all. This one. I just think the slow trend down is gonna is gonna make our indicators not look very good. Yeah, all these are negative. Uh, money flow index. Yeah, these just dropped below the 20. So this one here didn't do well at all. 
probably would have gotten in about here, gone against you, maybe 4%, and ladder buy maybe down there, and you get out and profit. You know, lose 1% on your first trade and gain 4% on your second for an overall win. And the others are looking pretty similar. Got a drop down here. This one looks better. 1.8%. About two on that one. But overall, not that great. Um, divergence or the MFI. Yeah, this one did a double drop here. That's no fun. You think it's coming back and then it drops again. It didn't drop that much though. So actually it would have been a decent trade. Yeah. One and a half percent. Not great, but you know, especially if you're on leverage, if you're on like 10x leverage, that's 15%. That's really good. Um the RSI might be a better no, it didn't do better. So our Indicator alerts aren't doing very well on this. Let's look at the chandelier. Uh, oh, the chandelier exit did worse. So none of these were very profitable. So I would not Based on these setups, I'm not liking any of this. I'd probably pass on this one. And the other one we were going to look at is XRP. Okay. On a one hour, it had some movement last week. Yeah, it went up 48% last week. But since the 22nd, yeah, it's kept about half of that. Not bad. On the five minute, uh, better volume. And we have a bubble forming, so that's interesting. And some decent room between the Bollinger Band. So this is potentially forming a one, two, three dip sequence. I like a, a price alert right about here, now 47 cents. Might be too soon. It might need to dip further, say 46 or 45 before you know, the dip sequence starts coming back up. That's a place to start. On our indicators, divergence, these went sideways. This one did pretty well. Yeah, 17%. Love that. Two percent, you know, three percent, not bad. This one did pretty well too. you know, almost 5%. So divergence looks pretty good on XRP. Uh, MFI, that would have been a good entry here on this cross. And um, this cross as well. And both of these are pretty close to the divergences we just went over. So I think either one would be good. Um, this is why I'd be curious to trade both directions on. We haven't talked about a short yet, so, but it can be dangerous to short something that's pumping, and this did have a pump, you know, yesterday. So let's disengage the, uh, the divergence. So I do like bullish divergence on that. My chandelier exit, obviously that buy entry was really good. That one went sideways first and then shot up. This one, you know, on, 
on the chandelier you don't get as good as entries but you, you tend to catch trends better than than the others so and on this one you can trade both directions put your alert on here and you know alert ce direction change it'll alert you each time that happens um yeah so i think i'd go with the, the direction change on this one any questions on xrp Okay, we'll do one more and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, we did the Elder Impulse. And in a bear market, I like to, I like to um, sort by this one hour projected range. I've already looked at quant. This is for scalping purposes but I think the, the ranges are too broad. I'm usually looking for an upper range of 5% or higher. This, this game token has it, but I don't know anything about this. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, it's on Uniswap, Bitrix, and Gate.io. I don't trade on any of those, so don't like it. XLM, yeah, I, I, we're not getting anything very useful in this sort. This one's interesting. On Lena, upper of 28, lower of 27, so that's quite the, the wide range. Uh, sometimes you can just go to your 24 hour change, say what's going on, what's pumping, and you can either you know, use this to short it or try to catch a continued trend. Helium's up 7.6%. It's got a bullish AA score. Uh, most of these are, are neutral, a bearish here in the long-term sentiment. And it just changed. Okay, just dropped. Uh, volume's pretty good. So let's check out HNT. Let's see if that's in my list. Yeah. Hour. Okay, last week it's up 24%. Little dip today. Trending up. It didn't drop that much when everything else did. Yeah, it's up five and a half percent. Well, that's what the that sort said. Uh, I've got some, as far as an entry, we're at the top of the Bollinger Band. I don't like that for an entry. I like to be towards the bottom. And we've got some nice support here on the sh short term, right around $5.11. A couple touches here, almost here, and then touches here. So this could be a good price alert um, for our 15-minute Indicators, divergence, bullish did okay. Took this one, went down at first, and then came back up about 4%. Or had you taken a ladder buy there? You know, you would have gotten out, depending on how you do that. You break even on your first and then take a, about a 4% profit on your second. That's pretty good stuff. Okay. Um, and then on the MFI, let's see, I'll look at the RSI too, but none of these dropped below the 30. Uh, this one dropped below the 20. Went sideways and up, not bad. You know, 5%, we like that. Another one here. 7%. That sort of aligns with 
with our divergence as well. So you know, those are consistent. So either your MFI or your divergence would have been would it would have been good entries on that. And on the Chandelier exit, um, they're not bad on the buy side. That would have been a good one. That one mostly side that would have been good eventually, I think. Not quite 2%, probably still be in that trade. This one did okay after it dropped first. Probably ladder buy around here, and then you'd be out here 17 hours. You know, about a 6%. Break even on your first, 6% on your second. Pretty good one there. Um, all right, well, that's about all I have. Any any questions on HNT or altcoin alert in general? Okay, how about the market? Anything you guys want to discuss? Okay, well, I will wrap it up here. You guys have a good weekend. Um, if you're watching on the recording, thanks for doing that. Please see the opportunities in the description or the comments below. They help fund the channel. If you're here for carbon, bad news. I'm, I've canceled that one. So uh, Kevin uh, Hokawana, the co-creator, has a Zoom at 5 p.m. Pacific. So I assume we'll have an update then. We can talk about those events uh, on the Monday night Zoom. So all right, guys, have a good weekend. Talk to you next time. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.